Hello and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Here we enjoy bringing you tutorials and other creative videos that share knowledge and inspiration. Have you ever wished you had a different strap on your bag or tote? Or maybe you need a longer or shorter strap? Join me for easy to sew solutions to this dilemma featuring our make a strap pattern. This pattern is a collection of four straps designed for woven webbing, so you can choose the style you prefer, the length you need, or even using the hardware you have on hand. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning your project. All the supplies and the pattern can be purchased on our website or request them at your local quilt shop. We always encourage you to shop local whenever you can. Before beginning, be sure to review the materials and supplies list on the back of the pattern cover. The back cover also includes a list of helpful notions. You may need additional length of the webbing if you desire a much longer strap. I'm sure you're ready to get started. Remember, you can always pause the video as the steps progress. That way we're sewing at your pace, but also you may prefer to focus on one particular strap style. We'll begin with an introduction to a few of the webbing options, including fiber contents and styles. First, let's take a look at cotton webbing. This first style I'm showing you is a softer webbing. It's a little more open weave or looser weave. And the second webbing, this is a wider width, but it's also cotton. And the tighter weave makes it a much sturdier, but also less flexible webbing than the first one. Next is a nylon webbing. And this is often used for backpacks. It's very sturdy, but also the texture makes it really smooth and doesn't snag or wear quite as quickly as a cotton webbing will. Of course, I'm showing you a black sample, but this comes in a variety of colors and widths. Our next sample is also a man-made fiber content, but this webbing is woven in a twill sort of weave, so it has a very smooth, soft, even texture. One nice thing about a twill weave is it is perfectly reversible. The stripe looks identical on either side. And here we have another really interesting woven webbing. This, again, is reversible, so the front or back look identical. It's incorporating several different colors of threads, but woven in really interesting geometric patterns. And again, this is a man-made fiber and comes in a variety of widths. The last sample I'm going to show you, again, is a man-made woven webbing, and it's very similar to the seatbelt straps that you'll find in your car or truck. These are woven and then printed, so you have an infinite variety of styles, colors to choose from, and also it's printed on both sides. So using this webbing for straps, your strap is instantly reversible. There are separate cutting and sewing instructions for each strap style. We'll start with the straight strap and be sure to follow your pattern for the specific cutting instructions. This pattern was designed to be compatible with the Sally Tomato hardware, which is available on our website. However, if you're using a different brand, there may be slight variations. So pay attention. You may need to make slight adjustments to the pattern pieces. You'll need your strap connectors cut from main fabric and then your woven webbing or strapping. And then an optional piece of fabric or addition is a foam or heavy stabilizer. I'm going to be using foam. It's going to help support the rivets, which I enjoy adding to my strap connectors. Be sure to use the correct size pattern piece for the width of your webbing. All right, on the wrong side of your strap connector, mark a line in from both shaped ends. And again, you'll have a different measurement depending on the size of webbing and the strap connector that you're using. 
All right, with the ends marked, we're ready to attach the strap connectors. Position one end of your strap or webbing on the wrong side of your connector, centered and aligned to your marked line. If you think you'd like to add rivets to the connectors, one option is to place a small piece of foam in between the layers. This will help support your rivets. And another option, if you're creating a two inch wide strap from two inch wide webbing, you certainly could install a metal handmade label on the right side of one of your two inch wide connectors. Try to press the handmade label prongs to the center of the label. That way the label is kept as small as possible so you can more easily top stitch in the next step. Fold the opposite end of the connector over. This will be wrong sides together encasing the strap. Align all the edges. And then we're going to go to the machine and top stitch an eighth inch from the outer edges of our connector. After top stitching the edges of the connector, thread one swivel hook onto the strap connector end and then fold the connector end onto itself encasing the hardware. Then you'll top stitch that narrow end following the previous top stitching. And you'll repeat the steps to complete the opposite end of the strap. Another option would be to install your rivets, adding reinforcement and style to your strap connectors. I found if I wanted to add a rivet right near the short or narrow end of the strap connector, just tucking a tiny piece of foam in between the turned layers helps really nicely to support the rivet. Buckle on strap can give your bag an upscale, tailored look or a rugged, work ready appeal. Plan ahead to substitute the buckle connectors on the current bag you may be assembling. Measurements for the small size are listed first and the large size is noted in the brackets. If there are no brackets, use the size listed for either size. First, cut out all your fabric pieces. You'll need the main fabric buckle connector, the belt hole strap, and buckle strap. Then cut your webbing or strapping following your pattern. Two options are adding fusible interfacing for your belt hole strap and the buckle connector or adding foam or a heavy stabilizer. This will help support the weight of the strap and the tote as well as support any rivets if you decide to add rivets. In order to prevent the raw ends of the woven webbing or strapping from unraveling between the main fabric layers, melt each end of the strap lightly by touching it with a lighter or use a candle. I prefer to use a candle. I can keep my hands a little steadier. If your webbing is cotton or if you're not comfortable with melting the raw ends, simply sew over each raw end with a wide zigzag stitch multiple times, just like I've done here. Next, center and fuse the interfacing on the wrong side of the coordinating main fabric pieces A and B. That's your connectors and your buckle pull strap. First, we're going to prepare the buckle straps. Fold your main piece D, that's your buckle strap, in half lengthwise, wrong sides together. and then top stitch the long edges with an eighth inch allowance. You'll repeat that same step for the remaining buckle strap, just like I've done here. Let's move on to shape and assemble the belt buckle connectors. You'll position a small spool of thread in each corner of your main piece A, that's the buckle connector. Trace the outer edge of the spool from edge to edge, and then trim the corners following the marked lines.
On the wrong side of your connector piece, mark in from both short ends and then in from each long edge to create a box inside your connector. Cut away the box just like I've done here and the opening will match what's listed in your pattern. And if you're using a different buckle as a hardware piece, you'll need to adjust the measurements so that the box shaped cutout still measures the same as is listed in your pattern. Then on the right side, mark a vertical line in from each short end using removable pen or chalk. Then you're going to top stitch an eighth inch allowance along both long sides of the connector, beginning and ending at those vertical lines. And then also top stitch an eighth inch from your cutout opening on both of your connector pieces. On the wrong side of the connector, mark a line in from one short end and then take your buckle strap, the narrow top stitched piece, and overlap the ends forming an oval. Then position the oval inside the marked line on the wrong side of your connector. You'll top stitch the overlapped ends in place I've also found a slightly easier way to attach the oval, and that's to place one end of the strap on the wrong side in place, just inside the marked line, and top stitch that end in place. You only need about a half or three quarters of an inch stitch. Then, while you're still at the machine, form the oval with the strap and overlap the ends, and then just top stitch that remaining end in place. I kind of like this method a better because it's easier to get under the machine, but also I can check that my oval is large enough that I can get the machine foot in the area because it is kind of tight. Repeat the steps using your remaining buckle strap and connector. Then we'll move on to attach the buckle connectors. Thread the connector over the buckle and fold it in half wrong sides together, meeting the short ends and encasing the buckle. Hold in place with basting tape, glue, or I've just used a sewing clip. If you'd like to add rivets to the buckle on strap, you might think about adding a small piece of foam or stabilizer between the main fabric layers to help support the rivets. Then position the buckle connectors at the desired location on your bag project at the appropriate assembly step. I'm centering over the side seam. And then top stitch the raw edges and along the marked line to form a stitched box. And then certainly you could add rivets or even top stitch an X within the box stitching. And be sure to visit youtube.com backslash Sally Tomato for a video tutorial on installing the rivets. Let's put the tote with the buckle connectors aside for a minute and move on to preparing and attaching our belt hole strap. On the wrong side, mark in from the straight end of your belt hole strap. And then if you'd like on a wide two inch piece, install a handmade label on the right side. 
line one raw end of your woven webbing on the wrong side of the belt hole strap along the marked line. Position a second V on top, wrong sides together, aligning all the edges and sandwiching the webbing in between the layers. If you'd like to add rivets to the strap ends, you might think about cutting a small rectangle of sewn foam and place that between the strap layers to help support your rivets. Top stitch an eighth inch from all the edges. Stitch across the short straight end of piece C again if you'd like, with a 3 8 inch allowance for extra security. Then mark and punch holes following your pattern for the PC or the belt hole strap. And if you'd like, Mark the placement for the rivets and install them. Then you'll repeat these steps, attaching the remaining belt hole strap to the opposite end of your webbing, creating a new strap for your next bag or tote. Be sure to follow your pattern because there are various sizes, so each size is designated within the pattern. You may find it helpful to highlight or color the width and measurement that you need for your specific strap project. We'll need main fabric, which is optional, and then your woven webbing or strapping and hardware. First, you'll prepare the strap ends and you can either melt the end with a lighter or candle if your fiber content will melt properly. Otherwise, if you're using cotton, or you're uncomfortable melting the raw ends, simply zigzag stitch over the end multiple times. And I'm going to show you another technique. This is a great finish for a woven strap, whether it's a polyester, a nylon, or even cotton. On the wrong side of each piece A, that's your strap tab, mark a line in from one long edge. Then with wrong sides together, align one raw end of the webbing strap along the marked line on the strap tab. You'll top stitch the webbing strap an eighth inch from the raw ends. You can also use basting tape to hold the strap tabs in place. Now we're going to fold the tab in half, covering the right side of the webbing strap. And then at the sewing machine, top stitch the tab in place, catching all the layers. You'll repeat the step, attaching the remaining strap tab to the opposite end of the webbing strap. To assemble the adjustable strap, thread one end of the strap over the center bar of your slider buckle, then fold the end of the strap to the underside and top stitch the end of the strap to itself. And then with the underside facing out, thread the opposite end that's without the slider buckle through a swivel hook from the inside to the outside. Then thread the strap back over the center bar of the slider buckle. And to complete the assembly, thread the end through the remaining swivel hook 
and fold that end about an inch to the underside and top stitch the strap to itself. The hybrid adjustable strap perfectly transitions wider straps to narrower hardware, creating a sleek, streamlined finish. Be sure to refer to your pattern for the correct size that you need for your strap width and hardware. You'll need woven webbing or strapping for the strap. Refer to the steps at the beginning of the basic adjustable strap section to prepare the webbing raw ends. And then also your main fabric for your connectors and strap tab. And another option is adding a little bit of foam or heavy stabilizer. Then we can go right to preparing the strap connectors. You're going to top stitch all the edges of each strap connector with an eighth inch allowance. And I like to begin the stitching at the end with the square corners because that's going to get covered as we assemble the strap connector. All right, thread one end of the strap over the center bar of the slider buckle and then fold the end of the strap to the underside and you'll top stitch the end to itself. And then with the underside of the strap out, thread the opposite end without the slider buckle through a rectangle ring from the inside to the outside and then thread the strap back over the center bar of the slider buckle. Now thread one swivel hook onto a shaped strap connector, aligning the angled edges. Then align the rectangle ring to the wrong side square end of the strap connector or the wider end of the strap connector and then fold that shaped end over the hardware and the smaller strap connector layer. An option if you plan to add rivets to your strap connectors would be to place a small rectangle of sew-in foam between those layers to help support the rivets. All right, so now on the right side Top stitch through all the layers following the previous top stitching of the overlapping end. That way you're catching that smaller layer underneath. And then again, an option of installing rivets adds a little extra reinforcement and style to your strap connectors. Thread the end through the remaining rectangle ring and to the underside. You'll then top stitch the end of the strap to itself. Add the remaining rectangle ring, swivel hook, and connector tab to the remaining end of the webbing end, completing your strap. I hope you enjoy customizing a new strap for your most used bag. Or maybe it's a replacement for a worn out strap or just a fun, bright, colorful accent. Feel free to comment below if you have further questions and we'll do our best to answer them. We encourage you to share photos of your completed projects using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag make a strap pattern on social media. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That way you'll always know when a new video is here. Well, I hope you got some ideas today. Thank you for watching and until next time, have a great making day.